Good morning, folks, saying goodbye to that small inactive region turning away there. We broke 125 million views this morning on the channel. Thank you, everyone. We've got a lot to cover today, including the other half of our star, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, finding the last day on the sun with the equatorial coronal hole approaching center disk. Two days in a row, we've noted the seismic risk elevating as it enters center disk and magnetic connections begin unfolding. It's creeping closer now, about one more day to go. Meanwhile, the solar wind is as quiet as the solar flaring. Normal range here, and steadying telemetry leaves Earth's magnetic field very calm and quiet this morning. Smaller earthquakes have already begun to cause damage as shallow rumbles hit western India, this one killing a few as it collapsed a home. Meanwhile, houses are collapsing in Brazil due to flash flooding and landslides, inundating cities after a dam failure. We also saw a landslide strike Morocco, and so far, over a dozen bodies have been pulled out of that one. Two more in flash flood landslides in northern Turkey. Quick look at the jets driving record heat in Europe. Take a look at that bend northward. And across the sea, the opposite bend south in the eastern states driving that record cold. We've got two animations in the atmosphere from NASA SVS here. First one is GPM dissecting the recent storm that flooded Washington, D.C. and other regions in the east. We also have the Firex aerosol and atmospheric chemistry mapper. These videos and explanatory pages are linked for you below the video. This one is quite pretty. Quick shot of respect going out to this team trying to better understand electroquakes and the pre-seismic signals that let us forecast them. Just as we say over at QuakeWatch.net, they agree it's not a matter of whether they give electric pre-quake signals, it's about spotting them fast enough and without false positive error. By the way, they are using the stress-induced current model. Up next, it's the National Russian Report of the Geosciences, and in their 100 pages of explanations and factoids, I found their length of day correlations to solar activity and geomagnetic jerks by far to be the most important. That's the sun and the core able to glitch out Earth's rotation speeds slightly, but noticeably to our sensitive instruments. Folks, my favorite team of solar physicists, the ones from UCAR and NCAR, have done it again. Looking at how the sudden death of solar cycles, hopefully we remember that one, causes a tsunami in the solar interior that triggers the next sunspot cycle. Dr. Dick Potty led the visualization, predicts the next solar cycle to begin by 2020, with which we agree 100%, Good thing she's agreed to the conference next year. Wink. Last but not least, we're at S02, one of the closest orbiting stars to the center of the Milky Way. They say that while Einsteinian gravity has begun to fray at the edges of extreme conditions, it still works for stars, even in extreme orbits that breach a few percentage points of the speed of light. It is worth noting that they took out the dust and gas and disk and plasma they do get returns for in the region. Otherwise, we'd never see anything at all. Folks, tomorrow we will officially announce Observing the Frontier 2020. It'll be in August. It will be in Denver. More details coming tomorrow, as I said, and much more in the days that follow that. It is five days until the first infomentary movie comes out here at this channel. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.